Welcome back to the Quake World Championships. We have concluded the round of eight, which means the next three matches that we're going to have up here on the stage at QuakeCon 2023 will be unfortunately elimination matches joining me here to escort some of the players out of the tournament it is flea and catch up gentlemen our next one is saigib versus maxter the lives the tournament lives are on the line on this one and uh you know i'd love to hear what you think about it exciting match ahead of us all right this is i mean a lot of people were expecting maxter to go really far into this tournament yep. and not immediately drop down into the situation that he's in right now on the other hand i give the expectations probably a little bit lower but he's mm -hmm. managed to make it pretty far in here right he's beaten sip he's beaten effortless then he lost to zeniku then he beat effortless again so now he's lost representative of his team mcs in the quake world championships are we just in a position where, look, at the BYOC side of QuakeCon, Saigib has actually done quite well. You know, I was watching him yesterday and he was kicking ass and doing all the stuff you expect of an mm -hmm. event like this. But uh, in the tournament today, must admit, haven't really seen that pushed forward version of Saigib that I've grown used to seeing. Mm. We know how talented this player is, but as of the last few matches, Seeing as he's going up against Maxter, I just don't know if I see it. You know, I, I would be over the moon for him uh, <laughs> if he is able to uh, conquer Maxter here and take it. You know, we know he's focused. We know he's capable of great mm -hmm. things. I mean... Just think that Maxter's looking a bit better this weekend. No glasses, not chewing gum. Uh, I, this, who is the psychic on the stage? Uh, I don't psychic. know. Uh, no. Um, yeah. If he I, loses map one, I'm going to run over there and just I, jam a piece of gum in his mouth. Uh, who's got like a stick Popeye of gum? with spinach. This isn't uh, Psygib, it's a mask. <laughs> Uh, you know, and his opponent, Maxter, uh, did have a pretty interesting game versus Kilson. Uh, lost that one to be, get dropped down to the, the lower bracket. Uh, it was, it, you know, one of those games that I'm not going to sit here and say Maxter could have won, but he had a series that came down to a sudden death uh, over time, and it, and it, you know, it kind of let the, the rest of the series run away with uh, Kilson. So... Uh, he's got to win this in order to stay alive. I'm very eager to hear maybe some stats uh, that you've got for us, Lee. I know you've got stats. When do I not? Yeah, We've, exactly. Well, within the context of the Quake Pro League, gentlemen, these have faced each other six times. Okay. And Maxter can I, can I guess? Has guess. Okay. I think Maxter's won every time. Getcha. Look, my memory is like a goldfish, <laughs> but I'm inclined to agree. Indeed. Okay, Indeed, all right. Baxter has yet to lose a series against Saigib within the Quake Pro League. Well, I think you were up here when another curse was broken yes, already indeed, this weekend. So maybe you are the key, Flea. Maybe Let's you're the curse so. breaker. Let's hope so. If, I mean, if you're rooting for NA, if you're here for Saigib, and I know that a lot of people in the audience are, then, you know, this may be the moment. Yeah. Maxter always has the chance to break more curses, too, on account of being really one of the only people this entire weekend that has picked Keel and done well <laughs> with Keel. You know, just demonstrating the, the broad... We haven't looked no at the spoilers. picks and yeah. yet. You know, that's a subtle yeah. hint at production uh, <laughs> but we can see a pre-game thing. Yes. They've either just been hovering on those champions or we're actually going to get it. I, we are going to find out in just a moment. But before we check out the picks and bands, let's actually hear from Saigib, whose tournament life might be on the line. My username is Saigib, and I'm part of MCS. My username comes from, uh, I, I watched a lot of frag movies when I was younger. And there was one in particular called uh, Three when it was for Quake Three, so it was kind of a weird name, Quake Three Three. But um, one of the songs in there was called uh, "Psychic Gibbon" by Younger Brother. That's my. It's been my favorite song ever since I've seen it. So I just shortened it to Psy Gib, and uh, it's pretty much stuck since then. I like Anarchy a lot. It's just very mechanical and very difficult to play, and uh, it's just he's very strong still. So you can nerf him a bunch, but he's very strong. He's very fun, very difficult to play, but also really rewarding which I, I like a lot. My favorite weapon would have to be the LG and the lightning gun, just because I wouldn't say it takes the most skill, but it always, it feels so good to just hit a lot of shots with it. And it's very difficult to use right now in the current meta, but I do like it a lot. This isn't my first QuakeCon. I've been coming to QuakeCon since 2009. I came actually with my family originally, and we would just be like spectators and playing in the BYOC. And then for a couple of years, I tried to get in the competitions, but never was able to. And then one year I joined a really good team in 2014 with Rafa, Clock, and uh, ID. 
and then I've been pretty much competing in every QuakeCon since then as, as much as I could and and I just love uh, to do it here. It's always, it's always like, it's always very fun. Over the next few days, I'm pretty excited to play Rafa and practice a lot. I don't know when I'll face him in the bracket or if I will face him in the bracket, but he's always a treat to play on land because in the beginning, he always like does really good, but then as the tournament goes on, you give him practice, he just gets better and better and he becomes unstoppable. And in the bracket, I can't remember exactly how my bracket's looking. I think if I get out of my group, I face Zeniku. So that's gonna be a very nice one. But if I beat him, I'm excited to play Razy. I've always had trouble playing him in matches. So I wanna like have a chance at that again to like try to beat him and finally finish it. But we'll see, we'll see. I, I, I'm failing it this year. The best chances taking home the belt. Everyone's gonna say it's them, of course. I'm gonna have to say it's me. But if we had the second best, that would have to be probably Rafa. A shout out would probably be to uh, Death Row, all of MCS, my family for supporting me, all of my friends uh, as well, like getting excited for me, learning about Quake and jumping in. All right, I think I saw Saigib chewing gum. It's not right now, but I th I'm pretty sure it's a thing. All right, uh, aspirational. Uh, words there from Saigip. Oh, yeah. Mm, oh, there yeah. it is. <laughs> there there it is. is. Chewing away. All right. This is the Saigip I know. Let's look at the picks and bands. Uh, liked what he had to say. I think every interview since uh, Nosfa, everyone said, well, I want to win it. And then have gone on to say who they think. Good night. What well, do we got? Well, it looks like Maxter is going to be keeping that what was a trick up his sleeve and is becoming a bit of a staple on Corrupted Keep. So the Kiel is coming out to play for another time versus the BJ from Saigib, removing that crouch slider in Strog straight away. Deep Embrace taking Athena out of the equation. Uh, Ranger versus Slash is going to be our matchup there. Then finally, my personal favorite, Death Knight, coming out on the Veil of Nath. Scale Bearer removed, Maxter with the Ison. I love Maxter just committing to the kill, you know, because I yeah. was talking to players backstage and one of the things that was coming up was people going like, well, you know, Kiel has been off meta for such a long time. No one really kind of knows how to play against him well. So now that there seem to be opportunities where he works on keep, on fail, yeah. if you can bring him out, take your opponent yeah. by surprise, you know, it can really work. And it has. Dramas has one with him. Maxter has one with him. So there's definitely players who have made it work. Then Deep Embrace, we've seen Slash come out. Very difficult to play slash well on the map that is deep embraced. Yeah. It can work, but it's definitely tricky. And then Veil of Nav, Death Knight with the Flame Strike, catch up so fond of that he is, versus the Ice. So you've got one ability that's much more aggressive, and then the other is more to cement yourself on the map, get information, lock down the teleport. Maxter almost beat Kilson on Corrupted Keep with the Keel. Uh, I think you said oh, yeah. committing to it, right? So uh, it, that was a game that went into overtime. He was in the lead at one point. I agree with you. Commit with it. Uh, it, it could help you out in this way. We just saw Strong Sage on Deep Embrace with Slash uh, versus Venger's Athena. Uh, almost won that one. Venger wins at 6 5. So uh, we are seeing some interesting yes. directions in uh, the champion picks. Catch up. Uh, any other thoughts about this as we wait for the game to be in? Uh, nothing in particular for me. Uh, we kind of look at that final map, and I don't think there's going to be any surprises there. Uh, I know we haven't really seen much, if any, Death Knight this weekend so far. Uh, if there is, I certainly haven't been able to catch the match. Um, but even on that final map, you look at what Death Knight's going to be able to do. Maxter is actually one of those players that's not been shy of picking that champion either. So right. if there are any tiny little tricks you might be able to pull off, some angles maybe for the flame denial or whatever else, Maxter's one of the few players that's probably going to know that as an option. So right, right. that element of surprise may not work if your opponent is I, just as acquainted as you are with the champion. I think we've seen DK picked in map three, but then not gotten to that map three. I've seen him. Okay. I think twice, most recently, was Kelts versus Buckster. Kelts played okay. him on Corrupted Who won that game? as well. Uh, Buckster, quite convincingly okay. well, so I mean, in the end. So. I would have guessed that based off of the first match yesterday, but... Well, oh, no, the, the overall match was actually rather close. The first game was really close. Bunkster ended up securing it 2 to 1 by just saying oh, wow. that the Death Knight being played for by the record, Kels didn't in, in, in work. In case correct. anyone at home is thinking, wow, the commentators don't know the matches, we're bouncing between streams, <laughs> man. Like, we're looking at here and then the no things going on. No one thought that. No everyone no gave oh, the no, benefit the, of the, the doubt. The internet is a sure really positive up. place. Yes, I'm sure yes. everyone's lovely. Yes. We're going into our match, by the way. We are. Uh, we're in warm up and we're going to get going. Gentlemen, have a great time. I'll be back.
back. Thank you, Weed. See you soon as we are about to kick off. This is a lower bracket match. Tournament life is on the line. Whoever wins will advance. Whoever loses is out of the Quake World Championships 2023. It would have been a good run to reach this far, but you know both these players, they ain't going to be satisfied now. Either I make it through or I'm going to be disappointed. So. Maxter, this keel. Uh, there's a couple of elements to talk about here that we didn't really get to highlight uh, or, or pot pot potentially got there in the end. Even C. Uh, a few angles to deny that the keel can bring that I don't really think the base weapons can allow for you. One angle in particular being when you're down by heavy and you're looking up, being able to spam nades over that wall that no other weapon can reach. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if that's going to come out a little bit here. Saigib already uh, looking pretty good from a stack perspective. Maxter retreating back and is going to take that heavy and get himself ready for what's obviously going to be a fight in due time. This is Corrupted Keep we're talking about. Well, G was looking solid from Maxter right there. That was a good opener by him. 56% LG. It was a brief burst of it, to be clear. But that was promising already. And now players are going head to head. Maxter winning out with the LG. So much more consistent of a weapon at that range than the nail gun, than the plasma. Still ended up being rather close. Maxter dropping down to 40 points of health, but he is the one to walk away with frag one. Already covering that advance with one of those grenades, enough to make Saigib bounce off through the wall so he's not able to stick around and get any more damage on there. And now we're going to just defend this Mega. Saigib is there pretty early, but Maxter will have that perfect timing. Uh, we'll know when is safe to drop down, if that's even what he wants to do. So it's going to get picked up, but without the armor, bouncing him around. Wow. Rocket, 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 and he gets it as a second frag here. The reward, not only a frag, but the heavy to boot. And now Saigib, oh, that wow. was such a good grenade. Wonderful placement, and kind of akin to what I was saying at the beginning, uh. where there's an angle that he can cover that I feel like only he can cover. True, true. I mean, their weapon that arcs, right? It really drops right back down. And so if you've mastered him, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with those pineapples. Now, Maxer, this is a risky play. He doesn't have a lot of health to work with. And still, he's trying to hold his own against Saigib, who just picked up a mega health. Now, Maxer is also going to have to yield the heavy. Wondi will be able to contest for it. He's giving it up to Saigib. Whoa, Maxter with the timing on that tri -bolt. Had a rough idea that that's where Saigib was going to be. And actually, does it again. Oh, yeah, man. I respect the attempt. You know, maybe he wasn't going to go that way. I mean, that... Oh! oh, oh, oh okay. Pineapple. And that tri -bolt, dude. But yeah, it, it really must be like you're up against the visor, right? Saigib shows his face. He's a tri -bolt, Tries again a couple of seconds later. Perfect once more. And now Maxter, three frags up already. Making good use of that heavy machine gun. Of course, no railgun on the map that is corrupt to keep. So it is the heavy machine gun that is your main weapon to deal damage at a distance. Somewhere in the back room, Forty has the world's biggest smile on his face. And he no, just can't even tell you why. Tribolt from range once more. I had a, a good amount of mileage out of that weapon so far. Uh, especially from these ranges, I don't even know how that one managed to connect. But now, Mega in hand, the light armor. This is going to be Maxter's push. Don't have to worry too much about it. And that's that's an interesting side of this. You know, some players will favor that machine gun. In this case, Maxter clearly favoring the tri -bolt instead. Something about this just projectile-based damage that he's feeling more than comfortable with. Mm. But always kind of staying on Saigib's tail. Saigib pushes in big time with the dual wield doesn't really get a huge amount out of it. He's got away with the armor, but through positioning alone, has sadly given up the entire map, I fear. It sure seems like it. Now Max are racing back towards heavy. Out comes those nays that you were talking about, the impossible angle, and here we go. That's a lot of aggression. Saigib wasn't really ready for it, but still, Max are unable to do the damage that he was looking for. Can he close down the kill? Does he even want to commit? Wants to catch him off guard. Here we go, Saigib. Critically low, heavy, not up for another 15 seconds nearly. But Maxter isn't looking all that healthy himself. He had a good opportunity right there, but he decides to fall back on the mech. I think that's a wise choice. Couldn't chase it all the way and opted to prioritize a section of the map instead. If Maxter picks up that full stack there with the Mega and then just picks up a light armor, that's more than enough to work with as mm -hmm. a base. And hanging around near uh, Rocket, you can see perfect timing on that light armor as well. He's more than healthy. And with three grenades locked and loaded, 
all the ammo in the world, Saigib has to tread extremely lightly because you cannot risk that combo. The rocket into the grenade. Wow, that range oh. damage somehow is not enough to survive. He peppered it down as much as he could, but Max to stack was just far too superior. And now that five minute warning is initiated. A good lead for Maxter at the moment. Not very high in the stack department though. Saigib is planning that next attack, you know? Now, looking at control in terms of the items, it's actually a perfect split. Both players have taken 10 of the major, so that is a testament to how neither player has really been able to establish consistent, full control of the map and to set up that continuous rotation. Neither has been able to do so. Big rocket from Master Ouch. there. He's low, he's got to run. Saigib significantly outstacking him, especially after picking up the Mega. And now Maxter is on the back foot. He really doesn't want to give up any frags at this point, knowing just how snowball heavy of a map Corrupt to keep as one death can very easily turn into multiple. And four minutes for four frags, Ketchup, that is more than doable. Especially on a large target. There is the extra dynamic, I suppose, where, yeah, he's a large boy. Oh, good lord, that just... There's no other word for it. That just straight up didn't work. No. Nope. Maxter has taken a lot of damage, is able to time it perfectly, looking for the shotgun. Saigib just can't find the finish. I mean, he's just spawned, barely had any weapons to begin with. I, he was just praying that he had a shotgun for that encounter. Speaking of which, Saigib finally gets one off there, and there's a frag ready to go. Five more of those to tie things up. The worry thing you're going to have here is three and a half minutes, Keel's going to spawn with a giant stack. He's mm -hmm. going to spawn near a weapon. He's going to have a grenade or two. You've got to be so careful when you push him right as he spawns oh, in. That, oh, jeez. Oh. That was just too far of a distance to go for the heavy or the super shotgun, right? He hit, what, 20 damage, 20 damage, 30 damage, whereas Max was just so consistent, consistent rather with the LG at that range. Yeah, you can't go for that weapon at that range. I think Saigib was expecting Maxer to be more aggressive, to really come towards the ledge, and then Super Shotty would have been the perfect choice, but Maxter showed a lot of restraint and ultimately walked away with the kill. Now Saigib, here we go. He's got the stack advantage. Oh, those grenades. Yeah, you can see the look on his face. Not too happy about that one. That's the annoying thing about the grenades, my friend. It's not just the fact they do damage, it's that they move you around. They can. Yeah, they can serve that same purpose as a rocket launcher. You mm -hmm. get this opportunity to push in, the grenade blows up, and then just before you know it, you're out of position. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, big rocket out of the teleporter. Maxter might fall again. Indeed, he does. Saigib, tender to say the least. He does have the heavy. A few health bubbles are going to help him. That passive will bring him right back up to 100 points of health. But no, it will not be enough. Maxter, relentless. And that is just because of the point of the game that we're at right now, right? Maxter knows that he's got enough of a lead that he can just kind of throw himself at him. Even though there's a risk involved, he knows even if I die now, I am going to do so much damage that off spawn, I will be able to be the top dog in the <laughs> arena. <laughs> well, sometimes you can just do that. Yeah, just sometimes. do a grenade into a rocket, turn BJ into paste, and you're in a great situation. Why nice. not get it twice? Why not just get it twice? Of course, of course. So, fair to assume that at this point it's going to be Maxter taking that first map here, and I'm just liking the creativity. I feel like nice. Kia is a champion that had all but just vanished out of the meta. And then here comes Maxter, who this is not his first time picking a unorthodox champion mm. on a common map, and it's working out well for him. Having this ready to go in a competitive setting to secure a map, at the finals, I'd say this is some research well executed. Two mid airs, just for good measure. And I mean, look, muscle memory from this point, we're just going for frag movies. Yeah. I think 40 is going to be extremely happy with this result. Maybe, maybe this will bring Kiel back to the forefront of the meta, or at very least see him play it a bit more often because I think he deserves to be as well. And indeed, catch up 10 frags of a difference with less than a minute left to go. Even on Corrupted Keep, this is a done deal. And Maxter is going to walk away with a map one win. At this point, Saigib, I imagine already thinking about that next map. He should. You know, we're finishing things off here purely because we have to. Uh, in 30 seconds, we'll be done. GGs are going to roll out. We'll be moving on, talking about map two. On that note, you've always got to factor in that Corrupted Keep, while as interesting as this choice has been from Maxter, mm -hmm. 
No other map plays like it. True. So whatever happened Very here, true. what went wrong or what didn't go wrong, the keel may have been a humongous factor in this match. At this point, it's done and dusted, and there's very little to take away from it. Absolutely. This is the perfect map to lose if you want a clean break, right? One of the big factors, of course, is that there's no railgun on this map. And we know Saigib is a brawler. I think he generally prefers, you know, rockets, LG, super shotgun, but his rail is absolutely nothing to scoff at, right? So let's see how the introduction of that weapon on map two is going to change things up. Max are going to be keeping that focus rather intensely, I suppose. Max, mm -hmm. uh, a player with, as I've said, no stranger to this kind of setting, but one of those players from the very first introduction to the Pro League was unlike the introductions we had seen prior. I yes. think when you look back at Pro League across the years that we've had it, players that have made their way in from challenges, they've won the relegation match, they've earned their way into the Pro League, there has often been that slow period where a player has to find their feet. They've got to get mm -hmm. comfortable with the format. And there is, you know, there's room for improvement. A lot of players struggle. Maxter didn't. At no point while making it in did Maxter ever have to warm his way into Pro League. He hit that first season really hard, looked incredibly good. And then at the first LAN I ever saw Maxter play at, it was an unbelievable result. So that level of excellence was straight away. That isn't to say, of course, that he hasn't improved uh -huh. over his time in the Quake Pro I'm League. I'm saying right? what a foundation he yeah, started. Yeah, he absolutely started really, really high as a baseline. But of course, that constant exposure towards the other best players in the world has really only driven him further and turned him into really a top contender, right? He was talking earlier about the players within top six. Maxter absolutely belongs there. And I think many would consider it a shame to see him leave the tournament so early. Max to not making it to finals day, I would consider an upset. I agree. I and agree. I, I feel like most people would. You know, our eyes definitely don't betray us. We've seen all these different tournaments and everything else where mm -hmm. he's he's just continuing to get better, which is a scary concept. And if he's able to win here, which he absolutely can, uh, that is just a nice little way to finish his story, if yep. you will. But Deep Embrace is going to be our next map, as we've seen and discussed. Uh, there's definitely going to be layers of difficulty that Maxter will face. The yes. first one being that Slash is incredibly hard to play on this map. Uh, it's just being able to move around the way that she's supposed to requires a lot of execution. And being able to execute that movement while hitting all of your ridiculous shots at the same time. I know Strong yeah. Sage was able to almost do just that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I, I don't challenge Maxter's execution, though. No. No, 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 that's something that you cannot pull into Dot at this stage. His execution is almost always top-notch. We saw, for example, earlier Effortless was also playing Slash on this map against Razy's Clutch. And there were a few times where you could really see Effortless just struggle with the movement, right? He tried to slide away out of a room, but he's positioned slightly on top of a stairs, gets an awkward slide to start off with, and it all goes wrong from there. Maxter, I think, is probably a bit less prone to those kinds of things. We know that he loves playing Slash. He's an absolute top-tier crouch slider. But this, like you said, is a very difficult map to play Slash on. And Ranger is just a consistently strong choice. So versatile offensively, defensively. He's got the maneuverability with the orb as well. So this, yeah, I mean, I think Psykip has a really strong pick, but he's got to stay on top of the Slash. He's got to be the one driving the match. You've got to be able to punish those mistakes too. Yes. If they happen, mind you, Maxter could keep this as airtight as possible. There's going to be a massive difference in the stack. There's going to be a massive difference with that burst damage. But Maxter, the confidence and the execution shines through. So it looks like we're checking things out from Cy Gibbs' point of view first. Decent spawn. You know, we're going to be able to get access to all that health. Got a good amount of armor anyway, and we have LG. And the second we can get our hands on a rocket launcher, we can start to really party up close. But Maxter already kind of doing the smart thing and understanding I've spawned on the side of the map that encourages range. I'm going to use that range. Absolutely. That's exactly how he has to approach this as well. Now, there's very little time between the two major items. Heavy should be going in favor of Maxter, which is what he's hoping for as a light champion. And immediately there to pressure one rail. This is the second good use of the orb. Good play by Saigip right there. He realized that he was in a bad position and he wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. Now he doesn't want to show his face again. He'll be forced to. He's trying to keep Maxter at bay. 
stay clear from giving an angle for the railgun, but then out comes the rocket jump, aggressive push, and Slash, she is hella fast. Gonna be a free heavy pickup there for Maxta. You know, Saigib was kind of hanging around near Mega, having a slightly different plan maybe, maybe thinking Maxta was gonna be somewhere else, so that's gonna be a free pickup. Uh, big enough delay between those items to really mean something. These are two champions that can definitely reach those two in time. Slash, absolutely. But Maxter, continuing his plan so far. You know, I think his hand was forced at the very beginning to uh, just have this rail-heavy ranged match because he frankly didn't have the other weapons. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's working at the moment, mm -hmm. you're able to avoid that orb. You're able to avoid Ranger at his most lethal, which is oh. Rocket. What? How did you find that? Oh, goodness, I was still looking through Saigib's eyes, and you could see the surprise on his face. That was such a good play, and here we go, the orb. Now, falls short, doesn't quite get the damage he looked for. Oh, click, the click, the click, ah, oh, Max turn. I saw that impression, or the expression, rather, after the click. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he was like, well, I know I done goofed right there, but hey. No harm, no fall, right? He's still in it to win it. Still looking good. One frag of elite. Or one map of elite, rather. Three frags of elite on this one. He's got to be careful. He's railable. One rail will do it. Now a little tickle of LG will get it done as well. Oh, Saigip. Oh, come on, Mega really? spawned at just, just the right time. Maxter being at death's door and somehow still managing to do well over 100 damage at the direct and wait, the orb has to space it out. Saigib teleports to it anyway. The miss rail punished with that super shotgun and two fights in a row. You're just wondering, Maxter, mate, how the hell did you survive that? I'm surprised Saigib still went for the orb right there. It clearly overshot his target. It hit that back wall. He dropped down at the bottom of the staircase, was in a bad position, was on the low ground. I, I don't understand why he still, you know, went for it. Why he didn't just stay back and try to fight on equal footing. You almost wonder if, like, there would have been maybe an element of unpredictability. Although maybe. we could clearly see that Maxter was following it visually. Uh, and he was so weak. You know, all I need to do is just hit him that one little time. And he mm -hmm. did go for a couple of shots. They just missed. So the idea could have just been... I guess, I guess, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. You're trading unpredictability for a really bad position, but... I'm tired. I get it. Work I mean, anyway. Yeah, it's whatever it was, it did not work. Whatever four, it was, it did not down. work. And Maxter now looking good, healthy, nice stack to work with as well. Mega is up, and that will be our South American player's treat to consume. He's raising over towards heavy as well. Oh, good use of the orb. I'm liking how much Saigip has been using the orb just for mobility to get around, to escape dangerous situations, to take away major items. But now. He also needs to be able to actually put out some damage. Maxter doing 300 points of damage more than him, plus having much more control of the items as well. Twice as many majors. <laughs> okay. Max is having a bit of a hard time with the rail at the moment. And I get a little overzealous going through the teleporter at rocket speed just by <laughs> clean on by, and somehow Maxter walks away. Still alive, barely. That oh. can easily change with one rail and Saigip lands it. Good, but good. Here's the worrying thing though. We're sitting here, I know we're having a good time in that, but the fact that we're saying, yes, we're gonna get that shot. It's not the map really for that to be the situation. No, 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 no. Absolutely nice. demanding. Oh, good that's one. the orb that he needed though. And if that's gonna do anything, it's gonna maybe wait for the ammo to respawn, try and get a good spawn on the opponent. In this case, Saigip oh. is able to do that. I uh, can't really push in and get some substantial damage, though. And thanks to Slash's crouch slide fresh off the spawn, we are out of there. That was smooth, too, right? I'm not sure if Saigip was ex like entirely aware that Maxter was down there behind that pillar. What? He jumped and gave him an angle, and now, oh no, Maxter keeps surviving when he has absolutely no right to. And you can tell, right? Saigib's disappointment, this frustration with the inability to clean up the frags. You can see the confidence just oozing out of Maxter's gameplay, though, because even that fight there, all he had was a rocket launcher. I think most people were looking at that thinking, why are you sticking around? Like, you're, you're, you're so far down in stack, and you've only got a rocket. You have to hit almost everything a direct for that to work. Mm -hmm. And you can just see the plan work out. And it's to have that confidence of, oh yeah, I'm just gonna hit a bunch of directs. Easy, no problem. It's uh, rather 
scary, I imagine, to be on the receiving end of. But Absolutely. we are over this halfway mark now. Maxter not particularly healthy. And an even split between these two items. Uh, only one second really separating the health and the armor. In this case, though, Maxter trying to figure out what one can I safely pick up. I've been able to lead Saigib away. Saigib's now going to prioritize heavy, so that health is going to be mine. Instantly shut down the benefit of that heavy with one swift rail. And uh, sadly, there's only one rocket left to go, so Max has got to be really careful with that. Get the box. Yeah. Oh, there comes the orb falls short. It doesn't quite get there far enough. That's a shame. Time is not Psy Gibbs ally right now. Oh, nice little bit of damage. 70 damage on the Tribolt. Axter's Tribolt has been fantastic oh, all good series rail long. As well. Good rail as well. Is he going to let Saigib walk away? He doesn't need to stick around, really. He's three frags ahead. Rocket jump. Probably not going to work out for Saigib. One rail will clean him up. But I like the restraint that we're seeing from Maxter. He knows that he's in the lead. He knows that he just needs to play a defensive game. Shouldn't be taking too many risks anymore. Oh, bah, that was a big orb. Saw that one coming from a mile away, but unable to step aside. And now Saigib made it a two-frag game, but unable to re-stack right after that frag. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem at the end of the day, because yes, you secured the frag, and to be fair, we stole away the heavy, but mm -hmm. was in no fit state to hang around. I don't think that was particularly his choice to make. I think Maxter was very much able to spawn and just simply use that mobility of Slash. Uh, but just wasn't as monumental as you think it might have been. Just over two minutes to go, Maxter with a solid and, dare I say, comfortable lead. And remember, folks, this is an elimination match. If Maxter wins this, Saigib is out of the tournament this weekend and the World Championships. A lot of pressure on his shoulders right now. Nice rail to open things up with. Health level is there, though. Maxter able to restack, make his way over towards Mega. Now Heavy is up in 10 seconds. Saigib, he doesn't really have a choice but to push aggressively. Nice That's push. Good. Yes, yes, yes. Can he finish it off, though? It was a oh, very... no, he's not even going to be able to take Heavy, I think. It was a really creative angle as he advanced, too. Now, Maxter, understanding that Saigib's a bit closer than maybe we expected. Yes. So we're going to keep the distance, allow him to take it. We're going to disengage instead and just protect our frag lead because that, at the end of the day, is how we're going to win this series. Drive by Rocket, maybe expecting Saigib to push through the TP, but man, smarter than that. Sadly, though, might not have time to think about it anymore. Looking for the orb, expects the teleport. Maybe a bit too predictable, that one. Saigib's been teleporting towards those orbs most of the map. And in this case, Maxter is using that to just simply exaggerate that frag difference. And now I'm just not seeing there being enough no, time. No, that's, that, that one was GG. I mean, Saigib had to do something, right? Desperate times call for desperate measures, but that indeed was perhaps a little bit too predictable. I'll take another look at the stats. Major items are actually very balanced. Maxter's slight lead in terms of damage dealt. It's actually Saigib who's been doing so much more with the railgun. Doing a good job at keeping Maxter stack relatively manageable, but then cleaning up the frags has often proved to be a little too difficult. In these last 30 seconds, we're going to play through simply as we must. However, it's not going to change the outcome. GG's to Maxter, mm -hmm. who's going to take this 2-0 to zero and uh, sadly will be eliminating Saigib from the Quake World Championships this year. You know, it's been wonderful to see him play all year long with those weeklies. And as it all ultimately comes to a head here at QuakeCon, a tournament very close to Saigib's heart, as is the community who love him very much. So Absolutely. GG's, Maxter is going to secure the last one there. And that is a done deal, Flea. Indeed it is. Applause for Maxter. Well deserved. Cleaning it up in a 2-0 fashion. But absolutely not an easy victory, right, Wheat? Not an easy victory, although Forty will tell you I caught him watching in the back. <laughs> there he is right there. I was like, are you sleeping back here? He's like, hell no, I gotta watch this Keel game. And of course was very happy. I think you guys called that out. Uh you know, it's some interesting play. Definitely came out there. I, I did like the Keel play. Uh mm -hmm. thought it worked out pretty nicely. The number of times I saw a side game kind of like 
no, that, yeah. that should not have happened, or that really bounced around, that messed me up. Uh, had to have been frustrating, but it, we see why Maxer continues to, to pick that. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the Slash game was, was interesting. Uh, hard fought, but I think Maxter deserves that 2-0, and uh, I am happy to see him move on right in, in the tournament. Saiga has been great all season long. I think he should be happy with some, you know, results that he's seen. Um, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that we are going to have Maxter join us shortly oh, I can see him. for an interview. Oh, he's already here. I, I can see him. I, I wasn't that. planning on actually introducing him, but hey, here we go. Maxter joining us on the stage. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. How's it going? Well, while you're here, it's a prime opportunity to look at your own replays. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Technology. I mean, there were some oh. rockets that I really want to see. And there were some fantastic uh, direct rockets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know. <laughs> we know all about that, especially from the uh, the Kiel map as well. Oh, yeah. Been representing the Kiel all the way through the weekend. Forty loves you very much for that, as mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. But, yeah, I mean, why not, even while these are going, let's just kick it off. Let's have a chat. So, you have looked really strong this weekend. You have had some incredibly close calls as well. I would like to start off being very broad overall. Still in the tournament, how are you feeling right now? Uh, well, I'm actually trying to feel a little bit more my game. I didn't feel that well versus Totsing on my first match. Like, uh, I wasn't feeling myself, to be honest. Like, suddenly I, I forgot how to play Quake. Like, my game wasn't there. Totsing was playing really good. I, he was actually being patient. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. that took me a lot of surprise because I was expecting his game to be more aggressive because that's how you, you, use, you are used mm -hmm. to, to see him. But in the end, I managed to just take it on the third map on Silent Death. Uh, and also, I made 40 being proud of myself. Yeah. I mean, you popped <laughs> off, right? I'm pretty sure I heard it in the, uh, in yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, I did because uh, I, I heard was, a yes! I, w <laughs> I was not expecting the, the result. I wasn't expecting his performance as well. And also, the fact that uh, I wasn't performance, uh, uh, performing as I was expecting, I was like, okay, I needed to get rid of that. And thankfully, I just managed to play against Gilson, which. Map one. So yeah, I mean, tell us about that's what I I want to talk about that map one. Uh, I, you know, to be brutally honest, it seemed like you had the game one, and there was that exchange right near Mega. Decided to go in. What what happened there? Uh, I don't remember exactly what happened there, but I remember that I overcommit one uh, one situation. That might be the the one. Yeah. And then uh, Kilsen just got the momentum. Right. And then when we were tired, when we were in the silent death, I there were a lot of time that he escaped with three HP. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah. Oh I, yeah. I didn't yeah. rewatch really it yet, but yeah. he was screaming all the time, and, and <laughs> when I needed, I was missing the rocket champs. It's like I was doing these cooler champs, cooler rocket champs, uh, all 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 the time, but. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, but uh, I mean, uh, I'm still in the tournament. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah, looking absolutely. forward to those. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have, do you know I who you play to? next or uh, who you it's, might it's play Buxer next? Boxer or no? Boxer or no? Yeah, yeah. Boxer or no? Okay. We don't know yet. Okay. So. I do want to ask you again about the keel, right? Because throughout yeah. the normal season, no one played him, no yeah. one touched him, and now we're at land, and he's a staple of your pickup. You've been picking him pretty much every single one of your recent series. So, what's changed? Why are you picking keel now? Uh, well, there was a change in. I think in the la latest patch that uh, now in the second bounce, uh, the grenade explodes. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, okay, in land, rockets are more powerful, tribal is more powerful. Okay, let's just add, and also, uh, uh. also the fact that in land, players tend to, tend to play more carefully, okay. really carefully. So if you're trying to attack, you will most likely will get 150 damage mm -hmm. just trying to attack. And right. also being the fact that kill now moves faster, and has really good stack, so... Okay, okay. You can almost say you're uh, innovating that with Kiel at the moment. Because, I mean, we've seen you play... I I'm, I'm sure we even had, like, an online interview after you'd picked Death Knight on a map that mm. we weren't really expecting, and it worked, sure. and we are kind of talking about it. So you're certainly no stranger to being able to uh, pick a champion that is a bit more unorthodox, or maybe not so much in the meta anymore, and prove that there's, there's still some source. Well, well, you know, there was some com a comment there that Baxter actually said it because he played against Dramis and Dramis picked kill on Bale of Nath and he, he wasn't expecting his pick and he said, well, I, I haven't seen kill in a while so I didn't know how to play it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, based off of some of the faces that Saigib made when he got hit with a few of those <laughs> grenades. Uh, another question about the kill pick, is it is that just for Krupp to keep or... 
or should I we wait tell and you see? That. Don't force All right. it to give All right. Hey, a curious guy over here. Look, right? look, I've like, been practicing on other maps, and okay. it worked perfectly. Uh, you know, okay. the okay. only the only match I lost with Kill all over this weekend was against Kielsen for one frag. Okay. So yeah. I, I haven't lost you've been, any. You've been cleaning right. up in the, uh, in the casual <laughs> matches. Well, you know, the guys were trying to see, ah, oh, you, you are going to pick Kiel, but they were joking about it. Oh, no, how am I going to pick it? <laughs> All right. That's what that Good is. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, uh, I think you're done for today, right? You get a rest and then, or? No, I think I have to pick oh, us for today. Yeah, I think They're does. Put you to uh, work, Unless master. you want to call it for today. Uh, Would you rather just, like, let's go? You, uh, you're ready to hop back in uh, another match? You know? No, like, Okay. Let's get inside the pool, maybe. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Let's get started the pool con, maybe. But now I still have one match, match today, and I will try to just make it to the top six. Awesome. Good okay. luck, my friend. Yeah, congratulations. Thank All right, best. stick around for just a second. We're going to take a break. When we come back, coming up next, I believe Chain versus Strong Stage here on stage. So don't go away. More from QuakeCon 2003 coming at you.